PSAs or public safety announcements are informational audio or video broadcasts that serve the purpose to educate or promote awareness on health and safety. As alluded to previously, these can come in a wide variety of formats with differing ways of getting the point across. A common PSA just about everyone has seen at some point is the emergency broadcast system typically shown on TV, simply referred to as the emergency alert system or EAS for short. While the EAS can be alarming to some viewers who are caught off guard, they're rather straightforward and to the point. Others can be made to be more appealing to younger children to give a more general advice on safety. This can be a short video featuring a friendly mascot to convey the message because why would you listen to a lame authority figure when you could have someone cool tell you instead? Instead, stop it. Get some help. Smokey Bear is an example of a well recognized PSA icon who was named after a real bear who was also named Smokey. He's very family friendly, at least most of the time, I think. But what happens when the origins of the character possess a more bleak story? What if the message of the PSA was to protect yourself from something more threatening to your immediate well being? To say the least, White Stag Education is a newer analog horror series that first premiered on October 22nd of 2022 and was produced by a team called After 10 Productions. Initially, these videos may seem like ordinary footage or even a genuine PSA about hiking safety, but as you continue to watch them, it becomes very evident that something more sinister is going on behind the cameras. In this video, I'm going to go over each entry in the series, then do my best to explain what I believe is happening in the story at the end, so... My name's Nas, and let's get into... The first entry in the series is called The Pine Barrens Hiking Safety. It was created by a man named Dan Sevy, who I assume is in association with White Stag Education, and created this video in collaboration with Ocean County Parks Recreation. The video goes on to explain that the New Jersey Pine Barrens can be a wonderful experience, but can also be a very dangerous place to visit and confidently states that this video would teach you the acronym SAFE to ensure that you don't mysteriously disappear while exploring what the great outdoors has to offer. To start, we of course have S, which stands for Stick to the Trails. It explains different trailblaze symbols, saying a single rectangle means continue straight and two rectangles forming a diagonal, either left or right, means turn down the respective direction. As of 1968, it's federally mandated that all trails must be blazed. So this is a federal standard of all hiking trails and important general knowledge. We're next told to not follow any unmarked trails or trails with suspicious marks on them. Here the music ominously cuts out and says that you won't return, which it seems pretty adamant about. Like, you never know. Maybe I'm just hiking over to the suspiciously marked trail to take a quick piss. Too much traffic on the properly marked path. I don't, you know, I don't want anyone to see me. Moving on, we get to A, which stands for Acquire Equipment. Briefly, I just want to point out how well that it segments back into the normal video. After the music abruptly stops, the message lingers for a bit and then fades out and the audio rises back in. I don't know, it just seems very fluid and without the insight of knowing that this was an analog horror series, I'd probably overlook it as it being out of the ordinary just because of how well it transitioned. A lot of the series will use static or glitching as a way to weave creepy elements into the more normal aspects of the series. Which is fine, I don't actually mind it, but it's just refreshing to have a more natural transition like that. Anyways, back to acquiring equipment. We're told that you should always prepare for any obstacle you may face and to use this checklist to make sure you have everything you need. The checklist includes food, water, hiking boots, weather appropriate clothing, first aid kit, compass, hiking knife, flashlight, and... Wait. No, that's it, never mind. A compass and a map in particular are very important when you get a little lost, so remember to pick up a map from the visitor center. You know, this PSA has been pretty helpful, I mean, I'm learning a lot of stuff, I don't know about you. I wonder what else important advice they'll have for us. The ominous tone returns as it tells us that there have been mass people living in the Pine Barrens for hundreds of years. In the background, we can hear a whistling tone and along with it some general outdoors ambience, which contrasts the lighthearted music that has been playing throughout the whole video so far. We're also so politely informed that an unholy entity holds dominion over the woods.
video then cuts to some footage being filmed through a camera of some kind as it tells us that if you hear whistling that you've unfortunately stumbled upon a false trail. The person recording looks up and we see that he's been surrounded by two humanoid creatures wearing what look like owl masks before it abruptly cuts off. Yeah, I guess you can't take a piss in New Jersey without getting jumped after all. Now we're on the final letter of the safe method. No cute or friendly advice here, only running for your life. Yo, those people are cheating. You followed the safe method and they still got them. But yeah, the person recording runs directly into a person whistling wearing a mask that I... I mean, I can't really tell what that is, but yeah. Then we get a credit screen and that's the end of this video. Christmas Eve Candlelight Service is the next video released, and opens up with a title card as Silent Night plays on an organ with people chattering in the background. We're given more information on the event as it shows us the service is hosted by the Grandwood Church of the Pines, and presented by Pastor George Robertson and filmed by Dan Seve and Luke Bale. Then there's a special thanks screen with a handful of names. You may consider this mildly concerning once you notice that looking at the first letter of the first names and the first letter of the last name spells how innocent send help. And now from a quick word from Pastor George Robertson himself. Christmas is a time for people to come together. Friends, families, enemies, warring nations. To celebrate the great gift God has given us this day. His son, Jesus Christ. Following this heartwarming and totally relevant speech relative to the day I'm recording this, he then quotes two Bible verses. The first is John 3.16, which reads, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Pastor George continues his speech by saying that humans have been given free will to do what we want, but Jesus proved that even with free will, we can live lives free of evil and sin. Now you're probably wondering when the creepy kicks in, and I'd say right about now. Yeah, the second verse comes from Enoch 21.4, and if you're only vaguely familiar with the Bible, you may have never heard of this one before. Don't worry, I'll get to that, but first, let's just read the verse. It reads, there too, I beheld seven stars of heaven bound in it together, like great mountains, and like a blazing fire. I exclaimed, for what species of crime have they been bound, and why have they been removed to this place? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, and who conducted me, answered, Enoch, wherefore dost thou ask, wherefore reason with thyself, and anxiously inquire? These are those of the stars which have transgressed the commandment of the Most High God, and are here bound until the infinite number of the days of their crimes are completed. This section from Enoch seems very random taken into consideration that this is a Christmas church service. Anyways, after the verses recited, the video abruptly transitions into found footage, but only audio is recorded due to a lens error. We hear two voices speaking and for simplicity, I'm just gonna go ahead and spoil some of the fun and say that turning on the captions does reveal who they are. They're none other than Dan Seve and Luke Bale. And for those of you who have this video on as background and not actually paying attention, those are the two individuals mentioned earlier who filmed the whole Christmas Eve service. Luke complains to Dan that he's not very happy to be accompanying him to wherever it is they're going, as we can hear them make their way down some stairs and enter a basement. We hear them arrive to where they're going before there's a strange animal growl that makes Luke Holy freak out a bit. Dan promptly reassures Luke like there isn't some horrifying monster likely in front of him, and cocks his pistol before a gunshot fires off. This will only take a second. This seems to be ineffective to whatever the creature is, as we hear it continue to bellow. Only now it seems pissed off and frankly kind of insulted that Dan thinks a pistol was enough to do the job and begins to break the chains it was apparently locked in. This is when Dan and Luke both begin to panic and we hear them both attempt to get the hell out of there. They run for a few seconds but then there's a static sound and Luke yells out as he trips over I think? 
and the unknown creature begins to attack him. Dan figures if a pistol couldn't do the trick, then Luke is probably a goner and just leaves him for dead and continues running away as the animal just shrieks in the background. And then, yeah, that's how the Christmas candlelight eve service ends. I said that so wrong. The third video in the series is the Intuitain production information video and starts by stating that the footage is not produced by White Stag Education itself, but instead has been released for educational purposes. They also state that they discourage the use of the pill included within the video and all products with similar effects. We're introduced to a company by the name of Genesis Technologies who have been developing a drug named Intuitain that heightens the accuracy of human foresight and explains that the contents of the video will go over some tests performed in relation to the drug. The first test is called the mouse and pitfall maze, where two groups of 25 mice are placed at the start of a pitfall maze with cheese at the end. Group 2 was given intuitane, and group 1 wasn't given anything. None of the mice in group 1 successfully reached the end of the maze, which, I mean, that doesn't feel realistic. I mean, I'm not a mouse or anything, so I can't say for sure, but like, certainly at least a few of them made it to the end. The video elaborates that the mice prefer to take the direct route straight to the cheese, just gun it, just gunning it straight down to the cheese instead of taking turns to avoid falling into the pit. Which, honestly, I understand. Humans, humans do the same thing. It's fine. Some people are so focused on the cheddar. They forget about the trap. In group two, however, 19 of the 25 mice reached the end of the maze, turning as needed despite the route being indirect. The conclusion made by these results is that the mice in group one simply followed their natural instinct to go directly towards the food, while the intuitane allowed the mice to go against their natural instinct to take the safe route to the food. Test 2 is simply referred to as human stoplight. In this test, researchers took two groups of 25 human subjects. Like in the first experiment, group 2 was given a dose of intuitane while group 1 wasn't given anything, and placed in front of a stoplight. The subjects then had to guess which color the stoplight would glow at random 250 times, and the accuracy of their guesses would be recorded. Out of the 250 guesses, group 1 only managed to guess correctly 79 times an approximate 31.6% accuracy rate. Group 2, however, scored a very modest 250 out of 250 guesses correctly. And the conclusion made by these results is that subjects in Group 2 relied solely on chance to predict what color the stoplight would glow, while the intuition of Group 2 was greatly heightened by the drug, allowing for correct guesses 100% of the time. Now you may be thinking to yourself, wow, this product seems amazing. It basically lets you see the future. Well, my dear viewer, there are horribly and deadly side effects to this product that Genesis Technologies even willingly tells you. Users of the Intuitane domestic pill have been reported having more vivid and lifelike dreams while asleep, paranoiac tendencies, and insomnia. But yeah, blah blah, scientific explanation may possibly depict future events. Now we're given three different reported instances of these vivid dreams. The first being from Margaret Pendleton. In her dream, she saw a never before aired televised puppet show featuring four different puppets and a park ranger. Margaret was able to illustrate an image of one of the puppets who she said was named Rex. Additionally, Margaret stated that while in the dream, she felt as though she's seen the program many times despite it never even existing. The second individual recorded is named Henry Ledger, who dreamt about seeing a meteor falling towards Earth and elaborates saying he watched the meteor crash near his hometown in Barnegat Township, New Jersey. Looking into this based on the effects of the drug, Genesis Technologies discovered a new comet which they wholesomely named Ledger's Comet. Now we get into the final individual recorded, Daniel Carpenter. Here the tone of the video dramatically shifts just as it has in all the prior videos at some point, with the soothing music abruptly stopping and being replaced by a silence that slowly becomes more sinister.
In Daniel's dream, he was standing in front of a group of masked humanoids. In the illustrated photo, we can see two figures wearing owl masks, one wearing a wolf mask, one with a rabbit mask, and one with a mask that I can't tell what it is still. In the center of the group, there's a very noticeable hole that Daniel recalls an immense amount of heat was emanating from. Along with the illustration, Daniel was able to transcribe a melody that he heard in this dream. This is a very blatant detail included within this video, so I did my best to recreate this melody with a virtual piano. Now, I'm not a musician of any kind, so I apologize for any inaccuracies, but I think I got it pretty close, and this is what it sounds like. Following this, the video says that three days after his dream, Daniel had a violent encounter with three of the masked figures he witnessed, but strangely did not come into contact with the whole. Nah, I'm just messing around. Could you imagine? Number four. Forced friend. <laughs> The final video currently released at the time of making this video is called The Stranger Danger Puppet Show. The video starts with a colorful introduction screen titled Forest Friends, a production created by Luke Bale and Dan Seve. Yeah, the same Luke and Dan who... Holy shit! Transitions into the first scene with a puppet who introduces himself as Rex. The show is filmed as an interactive experience, including the viewer as a character. After the viewer and Rex meet, he asks if you would like to go camping along with him and his friends, and sells the invitation with the once in a lifetime opportunity to meet Ranger Luke. Rex remembers that he still needs to prepare for the trip so he walks off screen, then a new character named Anna walks into frame. She looks around for Rex before noticing the viewer, then becomes visibly scared, saying that she's never seen you before. Rex comes back and reassures her that they're just his new friend, but Anna still doesn't fully trust the viewers saying that they could still be a stranger. Stranger throughout this video seems to not just be referring to an ordinary stranger by definition. It seems like they're talking about a very specific type of person, you'll see what I mean as we continue. Anna and Rex think about what to do for a moment before Anna suggests they go ask stranger Luke if he knows how to tell if someone's a stranger or not. Maybe they are a stranger, but how can we know for sure? Let's go ask Ranger Luke. He knows everything about stranger danger. You're right. Come on, let's go camping. Rex agrees and together everyone heads off to the camping site. There's a few lovely shots of the forest before we finally see him. Ranger wow. Luke. Anna and Rex greet Ranger Luke and ask him if their new friend is a stranger or not. Ranger Luke takes a good long look at the viewer then confidently states that they don't look like a stranger. This is one instance of what I was talking about earlier. Ranger Luke sees someone who he has supposedly never seen before and is able to tell that they're not a stranger. It's weird given that a stranger by definition is a person whom one does not know or with whom one is not familiar with. With this in mind, a stranger is certainly not just someone you don't know, but an exclusively dangerous dangerous person that you can recognize. Ranger Luke asks if Rex and Anna remember how to spot a stranger, and after they say no, he reassuringly tells her that we will all learn together. Now we get a real treat, an absolute banger, the Stranger Danger song. Remember that story from way back when, if you can't recall I don't want to undermine the effort that went into making the song, so I won't play all of it, but Ranger Luke tells an altered version of Little Red Riding Hood of her walking through the Pine Barrens trails. In this version, she follows the appropriate trailblazes, walks in front of a familiar looking hole in the ground. It's pretty clear that this is the same hole that Daniel Carpenter saw in his dream, but there's still not any known relevance of the hole, so I'm just gonna have to leave it there. Little Red continues onto the path when she hears what initially sounds like birds whistling, but then notices that there aren't any birds around. 
This is when she stops to notice that she's on the wrong path and continues back in a different direction. Little Red arrived with her basket of bread. There was no sweet granny lying sick in her bed. It was too late, granny locked the door. Red saw her face, it wasn't her. This part is definitely the highlight of the series. Little Red, same as in the original tale, goes to her granny's house, but instead finds a wolf there. Though the wolf isn't an actual anthropomorphic wolf, unfortunately for those of you who are into that, but instead looks like someone in an all-black suit with a slightly unsettling mask on. It would seem that Red didn't survive this encounter because following this, there isn't another mention of her. That's just where the story ends. And Ranger Luke he just keeps on singing like a G, he doesn't even give a damn. After Ranger Luke is done with his heavenly vocals, we get more video taken from different areas around the forest as a sort of intermission of the episode before we're introduced to two more puppet characters. This blue guy right here is named Oswald, and the slightly overdressed fellow given the weather is named Gleason. Oswald and Gleason have been hiking for a while until they come to this point and Gleason asks you know Oswald if he knows where they are. He says that they've been following the trailblazers, but Gleason begins to panic, claiming they forgot to use a map along with the trailblazers, meaning that they are in fact lost. With this revelation, Gleason comes to the conclusion that they must have taken a false trail right before they begun hearing the whistling. The whistling, as you can tell, has a strange, seemingly random tune to it, which Oswald says that it means that the strangers aren't hunting, so if they stand still, they'll be okay. Though staying still is probably the last thing you'd want to do in this scenario, because as the whistling continues, it becomes more intense, and the video begins to get very shaky as a low rumbling picks up until we hear a loud roaring. video abruptly cuts to black and opens a new scene with a character who introduces himself as Mr. Gungus. Mr. Gungus is a pretty chill pig and is here to play Mr. Gungus's game of the day which is Spot the Stranger. The strangers in this section are yet again represented by a figure fully dressed in one color with an animal mask on. For this part I figured it'd be fun to play through the game with you guys so let's see if you can spot them all before me. Alright, Loki forgot I writ this bit into the script. This is going to be corny as hell, but let's, fucking, let's do it anyways. Alright, spot the stranger. Let's see, let's see how hard this is going to be. Probably not very. Oh man! <laughs> coming, coming out, coming out pretty, pretty intense. I don't, I can't seem to find it. I, dude, this is so dumb. Why am I doing this? All right, that was a little fun. So now we're reminded that we are in fact watching an analog horror series with the next round, which asks to spot the adversary. We hear a rumbling and roar similar to the ones playing during the section with Oswald and Gleason before we see an all black sock puppet rise and begin to schmoove. The caption changes to, it rides beneath the forest. As the section ends, it flashes a quick message that says the burning sword protects us. For now, we get Mr. Gungus again, as he thanks us for playing the game and this portion of the video ends and resumes back to Ranger Luke and the four puppets all sitting around a campfire. Ranger Luke asks Anna and Rex what they had done today and they enthusiastically talk about their fishing adventures. After they finish, Ranger Luke asks Oswald and Gleason what they did today, and Oswald blankly says that they went hiking. Ranger Luke asks why they don't sound happy and they explain that they got lost and heard the whistling of the strangers, before saying we before knew we knew it, it, it was, was too late. late. Ranger Luke then asks specifically what they heard and they respond by saying that it was a song. He then asks what they did once they heard the music and they say that they stopped moving until they couldn't hear it anymore and then turned around. Ranger Luke then asks what they would have done if it wasn't a song and Gleason replies by saying they would have closed their eyes and ran away. They all cheer, celebrating the correct answers, and Ranger Luke ends off the video by saying, Always remember, strangers have no regard for your well-being. They aren't like us. Do not follow them into the woods, no matter how friendly they look. See you on another episode of Forest Friends! After he finishes speaking, we get a memorial screen that says, in memory of the Grandwood Four. The Grandwood Four seem to be four children who were lost in the barren pines and never returned. Their names are Ryan, Rex, Michaels, 
Samuel Gleason, Oswald Jones, and Anna Carpenter, meaning the four puppets and forest friends are named after the Grandwood Four. And this is where the Stranger Danger puppet show ends. So now after viewing all of the currently released videos in the series, I've done my best to piece together all the mystery surrounding the Barren Pines. And while it doesn't really affect the viewing experience, the events that take place within each video place them in a chronological order, starting with the Intuitane production information video. This video was created before all of the other ones and was redistributed for educational purposes by White Stag Education. It seems to be created as a record of the Intuitane experiments and the conclusions drawn from them by whoever worked on the project within a company called Genesis Technologies. The results of the experiments show that the strange drug can not only heighten an individual's foresight to a telepathic level, but lets you straight up see into the future, as we see that two out of the three dreams came true with the third dream only coming half true as Henry Ledger's dream was about seeing an unidentified comet, but the prophecy of it crashing down onto Earth has yet to come true. We can tell that it was the first video because Margaret Pendleton's dream involved her watching an episode of Forest Friends, which was said to not even exist at the time of the Intuitane experiments. And Forest Friends, as we know, would eventually be created by White Stag Education and broadcasted sometime afterward. It only makes sense that they would have created it without the knowledge of Margaret's dream. Not only that, but Daniel Carpenter's dream revealed to him a group of masked humanoid figures standing around a large hole. The video then says that three days after his dream, Daniel was attacked by three of the figures he had seen but did not encounter the hole. This statement makes it pretty clear that Daniel Carpenter is the person recording the footage that was shown in the Pine Barrens safety video, which would be the second video created under the guise as such. A simple hiking video, but pretty blatantly reveals itself as a word of warning to what truly lies within the forest. Within the footage, we see Daniel spot two figures wearing owl masks who are whistling, causing him to panic and run until he stumbles into the figure with the black mask. So there are three figures, but to further sell the point home, remember the tune that Daniel transcribed from his dream. This is what the audio sounds like side by side with the whistling playing at the start of the found footage section. They match up almost perfectly, ignoring the errors on my part. The next video is an episode of a local broadcast called Forest Friends, another PSA created by Dan Seve and Luke Bale, who seem to be at the very least prominent members of White Stag Education, if not the sole members. Forest Friends shares a lot of the same safety information featured in the previous video, referencing many of the same safety tips that were explicitly mentioned. Within the broadcast, there are four puppet characters named after children who went missing within the forest known as the Grandwood Four. Anna Carpenter in particular at this point in the series seems to be the most curious one of the four, sharing the family name with the previously mentioned Daniel Carpenter. Additionally, in the very opening shot of the broadcast we can see a photo of Anna sitting on a table in the background next to an angel statue. It's to my understanding that angel statues often represent mourning and a hope to reunite with your loved ones in the afterlife. Considering Anna is the only character this is done for within the broadcast, her disappearance was probably quite recently if it shows that the community is still mourning her loss. This leads me to think that maybe Dan and Luke didn't feel satisfied with the original Pine Barren safety video after releasing it, or felt like it just wasn't really getting the point across. Even though if I saw this shit, I would not come within a mile of this place. Forest Friends is likely a new approach made by the two to create a more appealing PSA to the younger demographic with colorful mascots, catchy music, interactive games, and even a little bouncy animation. This particular broadcast is a special on Stranger Danger and clearly addresses the cloaked furries that hide in the forest, though this isn't all. This video discusses another dangerous entity separate from the Strangers who is only referred to as the Adversary. The Strangers and the Adversary are likely in cahoots, but at this point in the series there's no direct interaction between the two shown. All we know is that they're both two different evil forces existing within the same forest. Now moving on to the final video chronologically, we have the Christmas Eve Candlelight service. This video is exactly how it sounds, but it's interesting to note that Dan Seve and Luke Bale themselves are the ones who recorded the service. 
The footage itself is short and sweet. Pastor George gives a speech, then reads off some Bible verses. It very well could be that they did this out of the goodness of their heart, but the events shown that follow suggest that they volunteered to film the service to reach whatever underground, basement, or bunker they went down into, leading to the fatal encounter. The two attempt to kill a demonic entity with a pistol, and as funny as that idea sounds, the consequences that come with it are no laughing matter. <laughs> Holy shit! With the video content over, I now want to briefly discuss information that was not given to us within the series. In the community tab of the channel, there's three images next to the text that isn't said or displayed in any of the videos. Using my massive brain, I deduce that these sentences are in Latin. And this is the point where you get to hear my super awesome and accurate Latin. The first one says, Igneus Gladys in Saxum Vertiter. <laughs> <laughs> which means the fiery sword has turned to stone. The second one says Somnium Mar <laughs> Margaret Pendleton Vertum Factum Est, which means Margaret Pendleton's dream came true. And the final image, undoubtedly the most interesting of the three, says Igneus Gladius in Saxum Vertitur. Ver ver vertitur. Vertitur et. <laughs> vertitur et Estrum Coily Nocans S. God damn, that was worse than I thought it was gonna be. Where the fiery sword is turned to stone and the star of heaven is guilty. So I guess I'll just start with the primary threat of the series and make my way around as it's pretty much the foundation of this series. Within the Barren Pines, there seems to be a sort of cult, but I'm sure you didn't need me to tell you that because wearing robes with a creepy ass mask is page one of the How to Look Like a Cult Handbook. Four children as well as Daniel Carpenter went missing or were found dead within the forest, all of which can be attributed to the cult who are referred to as strangers. There's no doubt that the strangers are very dangerous to the people who visit the Barren Pines, but there is another issue that could potentially be a threat to humanity as a whole. The creature that's only ever referred to as the adversary seems to be the primary antagonist within the series. The creature they encounter in the candlelight service footage is definitely the adversary they were referring to within the Forest Friends episode. As there they say it rise beneath the forest, which as we can see but not really the duo descend down into some type of basement or bunker. The candlelight service includes two different bible verses, one you would expect to be at your usual sermon but the second not, not as quiet. It comes from the Book of Enoch, which isn't accepted as a scripture by an overwhelming majority of Christians, and I guess you can say it isn't canon to the Bible lore. After looking into it some, I can tell you that with certainty, the first book of Enoch is referred to as the Book of Watchers, and tells about 200 watchers who descended upon Earth to look after humanity. The watchers are pretty much just angels, but these ones are very naughty because they lusted after mortal women and had children with them. The children were giants that had a huge appetite and ate up all the food and then began to eat mankind. This was obviously very bad and against God's orders, so he sent out four archangels to take care of the problem. All of the watchers were eventually bound to the earth and told that they would remain there for the rest of their days until the day of judgment. This is where the quoted passage comes from, when Enoch was on a sort of spiritual journey traveling with each of the archangels one at a time. He's taken to where the Watchers are bound and describes what he sees. That's pretty much what the latter half of the Book of Watchers is. Enoch goes around and speaks to God and sees heaven. I believe that drawing attention to the Bible here, right before the encounter in the bunker, points towards this creature being something unholy. There's a reference to an adversary within the Bible multiple times, usually always referring to the devil or Satan himself. Another allusion to the Bible is right after we see the adversary sock puppet, we get a quote that says, the burning sword protects us. Within the Bible, there's talk of an angel with a flaming sword that guards the gates of the Garden of Eden. This means that there's an unforeseen force that is defending the barren pines from the adversary. Or maybe it isn't very unseen. Maybe it 
maybe it's been seen the whole time. You see, going back to the community post I referenced before, the quotes begin to make sense when you have all the context. It says that the fiery sword has been turned to stone and the star of heaven is guilty. Along with this, it shows us a newspaper that tells us about the death of Luke, aka Ranger Luke. The star of heaven aligns with the Enoch quote calling them stars bound, meaning the angel bound to earth is the one guilty of turning the burning sword to stone. The burning sword is most likely Luke or Dan and Luke both. It could also just be referring to White Stag education itself too. The sword turning to stone while showing us a newspaper report of Luke's death adds up, but Luke also also played the role of a ranger within the Forest Friends broadcast. Rangers, as you may know, serve the purpose of protecting a forest, including the wildlife and the people who visit them. Not only that, but White Stag education itself is named after a New Jersey legend, the White Stag. The White Stag is a spiritual entity that aids lost travelers that get lost within the barren pines, and is also said to prevent impending disasters. This aligns with the purpose of the organization that Luke had a big hand in, to help people safely travel the forest and keep them away from strangers who likely brought people to the adversary to sacrifice them. But now that Luke, who was the burning sword that has been protecting the barren pines, has been turned to stone, the star bound is now free to roam among the land, and who knows what will happen next. But that's about all I got surrounding the mystery of White Stag education. There are still some unanswered questions like what purpose does the Intuitane pill serve? And honestly, I don't think there's enough evidence to say for sure yet, but one thing that I realized within the Book of Enoch, after the Watchers are found out by God, they seek forgiveness and ask Enoch to speak to God on their behalf. And the way he does this is by reading their pleas for forgiveness until he falls asleep. After he falls asleep, he has a vision or dream where God speaks to him and rejects their pleas for forgiveness. The only thing that I could come up with is that with the company's name being Genesis Technologies that may have a connection with the goal of the pill to speak to God or something like that. But again, there's just not very much evidence for that. One last thing that I'd like to say is that this series is based off of the legend of the Jersey Devil. I mean, I mean, if you hadn't caught on yet. I intentionally haven't explicitly said that because I think that the story that After 10 has been building surrounding it has been really cool and I appreciate the effort put in. I feel like with cryptids it really could just go like, it's something that exists and that's it, but the effort in making it more believable by giving it an origin is pretty sweet. But yeah, that's about all I have for this series. I, I would love to come back to it in the future if there are any updates to it. And as always, if you made it this far, thanks for watching, and another thank you to new and old viewers of the channel. I know that I made returning viewers wait a long time for this. It's been a pretty eventful summer for me to say the least, but I'm going to do my best to upload more consistency. Consi consistently. I know that I said that last time, but please just bear with me. I love making these types of videos, and I got some awesome stuff planned, so stick around, and again, thank you.